Hi, my name is Ophir Gabay and I'm bringing you another financial tutorial today. Uh, I wanted to go over how to create an amortization table in Microsoft Excel. And so let's get started. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is we're going to create some cell references, uh, input cells, and we're going to want to label those cells. So the first thing, uh, first thing we need to know about the loan is our annual interest rate and then we want to know the loan amount uh, the number of payments per year so if it's monthly this is going to be 12 and the number of years we're amortizing the, the loan over Okay, uh, so let's create a loan amortization table. We're just going to use some default numbers. Um, and so we're going to assume it's 6.5% annually. And we could point zero six five. that's 6.5%. And we'll click the percentage uh, format to turn it into a percent. And if you'll notice, it's only round. It's rounding to one decimal place. So we're gonna shift that over so it shows the whole 6.5. And you do that by clicking this this button right here, increase decimal. Uh, the loan amount is gonna be twelve thousand dollars. And let's make that look like a dollar figure. Payments per year, it's going to be 12 payments because this is going to be a monthly. We're going to pay this monthly and we're going to amortize it over five years. All right, so that's all the information that we need for the loan. Uh, let's get started on the actual table itself. Uh, on this, we're going to create four five columns. Uh, the first column is going to be payment number and then the payment amount, uh, the principal portion, and the interest portion. So basically uh, t we want to know and then uh, the remaining balance for the last row column. So basically, we're gonna, we want to know what's the given principal and interest portion of each payment and the remaining balance for any given payment number. So uh, we started off, let's start it off by saying payment number one. This is the first payment on the loan. Let's make this look a little prettier. We'll, we'll make it bold and a little bit bigger. All right. So the for first formula we're going to use, and let's double click this to make it a little bit wider. So the first formula that we're going to be using is the payment formula. And we do that by clicking equals PMT. And you could click this FX button here to bring up the payment window. I mean, um, let me do that again. I don't know why it didn't work. Hmm, that's weird. Equals B M T tab, and then you you click. Okay, so that's what happened. Um, you have to click the the tab. You actually have to bring up the the formula before you click that F X button. And basically, what that does is it just brings in this window. If you know the the conditions for the formula already, uh, you don't need to do that. You could just enter them in and um, base it off of, of this right here. You don't have to actually come into this window, but this makes it easier to if this is the first time you're doing it. So I'm going to do it this way. So this is the function, the arguments that we need for this formula. Um, and the first one is the rate, and now uh, this is uh, this is kind of tricky because it's not the rate 
per year, it's the rate per payment. So since we have 12 payments per year, we have to divide the 6.5% by 12. So the rate is really 6.5% annually. And we're going to want to make put this in absolute references. So you click F4 to turn this into an absolute cell reference to this. So you, as you see, if I, as soon as I click F4, it puts a dollar sign in front of the column and row number. So that's going to absolute reference that. That way, when we drag this formula down throughout the table, it's going to lock into that cell. It's not going to drag that cell down. And then, um, since this is the interest rate per payment, we have to divide it by the number of payments. And we also want to absolute reference that. So you click F4 again, and it puts it in dollar signs. All right. Uh, the next argument is the total number of payments in the loan. So that's the payments per year, absolute reference that times the number of years that, that you're paying this off of. And so um, you want to absolute reference that as well. So it's 60 payments total. And then PV, present value, is the loan amount. So the $12,000 that we're taking uh, a loan out for, and so you reference that cell, B2, and click F4 to put that in absolute references. And then that's all we need for this uh, function. So you click OK, and we get our payment amount, two thirty-four seventy-nine per month. All right, perfect. Now that in that payment amount includes a principal portion and an interest portion. So that's why we're breaking this down. Uh, we're creating the amortization table because basically we want to know uh, what's the principal and interest portion for each payment. So th the second formula we're going to be using is equals PPMT. So you enter you you enter equal sign PPMT, hit the tab key and then you could hit the FX function uh, button to bring up the function arguments if you want to do it this way. So for this uh, function we need again the, the interest rate per period so again that's this absolute reference set divided by the payments per year absolute reference set and then the second function uh, the second argument is the specified period that we want to look at. So that's going to be, we're looking currently at payment number one. Now we don't want to absolute reference this because we're going to be dragging this formula down and uh, we want it to, to continue with the row number. So you just select A7 which is the payment number one. And this is the total number of payment periods. Again, that's this absolute reference times the number of years, absolute reference. And the present value is the loan amount. Absolute reference that. And then you press OK. That's our principal portion. 169.79 now we have to do our interest portion and that's equals IPMT IPMT so equal sign IPMT click tab and we can bring up the function arguments window and again the the rate is the payment number put that in absolute references and then the payments per year also an absolute reference the period is the payment number that we're currently looking at which is one we don't want to put that in absolute reference for the same uh, reason Sorry about that. For the same reason that 
we didn't want to put the principal uh, in absolute references. So then uh, the next one is the total number of payment, and that's this. Absolute reference times the number of years, so 60. Put that in absolute references. And the present value is 12,000. And we click OK. So we see that our, our interest portion of the first payment is $65. If we add the 169.79 in the 65, we get 234.79, which is the total payment amount, which makes sense. So, um, so now we want to get our remaining balance, and to do that, we want to do equals the loan amount uh, minus. The principal portion. Now, you'll see that it, uh, a minus a negative number equals uh, positive. So we want to change this uh, to. Well, we could do it both ways. We could just add it here. I think that's easier. So we're adding uh, the loan amount and this principal column. do that again equal sign loan amount and we'll put that in absolute references and plus equals this plus principal portion okay perfect so that now our remaining balance on the loan after the first payment is eleven thousand eight hundred thirty and twenty one cents. So now let's do the the second second payment number, and you know what? We could actually drag this all the way down. If we put a two here, we could actually drag this all the way down to 60 mm. since we know that there's 60 payments and we could drag this all the way down also you see if you double click that it brings it all the way down for you and this as well and this too uh, to do it quicker you could actually we could select this whole thing and drag it down alright so now we have our principal and interest portions for each payment and as you see the last payment includes a very small portion of interest uh, and for this column we want to do a new formula here that which is equals this the remaining balance of the previous month plus the current principal portion and let's drag that down perfect so as you see after our last payment the loan balance is zero also very cool and so that's that's our amortization table right right there and the really neat thing about doing it this way is that now we could actually change the interest rate here from here and that will affect the whole loan so you as you see it still everything still works out but uh, we we could change the loan amount we could change we could play around with the numbers here to see uh, how that affects our loan and another cool thing we could do here is uh, we could add total columns so let's do all to equals and that's going to sum up the whole
column alt equals enter so that's the total number of payments we made if we drag that over we'll see that and let's make this bold and a little bit bigger and we'll label it total <coughs> so as you see what this tells us is that in total we paid sixteen thousand seven hundred seventy eight dollars and that included the original fifteen thousand dollar loan and one thousand seven hundred seventy eight dollars in interest which equals that it's so cool and uh, as you see now we can actually see how much more interest we're paying if say we were paying 7.5 percent we go down we see that we still paid off the whole principal of 15,000 but this time we're paying 3,000 in interest so that that kind of helps you out especially when you're entering payments into QuickBooks um, and you know which payment number it is then you could actually uh, know exactly how much of each payment is principal and interest if per se you didn't have the loan statement in front of you so um, it's another quick tutorial if you found it helpful please give me a thumbs up just to let me know that to keep making these vid videos um, and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this in the future uh, thank you for watching and have a great day also if you have any questions please feel free to put them in the comments below or you can email me at accounting at firstclasstaxsolutions.com. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.